So we created an exception mapper class in the previous tutorial that let us map existing exceptions or your own custom exceptions to a response so that you can control what the JSON payload is, what the status is and all that. But think for a minute about why we needed the, you know, the exception mapper. The reason is Jack Saris or Jersey has no context or no information about the kind of exceptions that your application could throw. It could be a custom exception, it could be a null pointer exception, but Jack Saris really doesn't know what to do with it, right? It could be because something that was uh, requested is not found, it could be because it was a server error, so it's really hard to map an exception to a status or to a response by default. So Jack Saris says, I have no idea, so you give me the mapper so that I can map it to a response. But Jack Saris also has these, its own set of exceptions that it does map to a status and a response. And uh, since Jack Saris knows what those exceptions are, you don't need to write an exception mapper. Jack Saris already knows what the response for those exceptions should be, right? So this is what we're gonna cover in this tutorial. Before we do anything else, what I'm gonna do is first go to the generic exception mapper and disable this. The reason is, this is like a catch-all. So no matter what exception is thrown, this catches it and overrides it. So we don't want that. We are creating new exceptions. We are throwing new exceptions in this tutorial. We don't want this thing to interfere. So I'm gonna just delete the at provider annotation so that this does not get registered in Jersey. And again, this is something you don't wanna do. You don't want a throwable map to an exception mapper. This catches pretty much everything and returns just one kind of a response, which is not good anyway. So I'm gonna dis have disabled this, I'm gonna close this, and now we're gonna take a scenario and throw one of these exceptions that Jack Saris is already aware of, right? These exceptions are called web application exception. I'm gonna take the example of uh, the comment service this time. I'm gonna look at the get comment method. There are a ton of things that could go wrong over here, right? Now, the message ID could be something that's not available. Now, if the message ID is not available, this returns null, and the get comments is gonna end up in a null pointer exception. The other thing that could go wrong is, let's say you get the message, and then you get the comments, but the comments uh, map might not have the comment ID that's requested, then it could return null. So we can address both these problem scenarios by throwing web application exception. Okay, so I'm gonna take this out. create a new local variable. And uh, here I check if message equals null, like we did in the last tutorial. But this time, I'm not gonna create a custom exception. I'm gonna throw an exception that Jersey already knows, and that's web application exception. Now web application exception is from javax.ws.rs. And now this has a bunch of constructors. You see here, there is one that lets you set the status. There's one that lets you set the response. Let's look at these two, right? I'm gonna pick the status one. I'm gonna say status dot not found, okay? Now, let me do something similar for comments as well. Okay, so I'm gonna check if the message is null or the comment is null. I'm gonna throw new web application exception of not found. If both of them are not null, then I return the comment. Right, very straightforward. Now, since I'm using an exception that comes with Jax RS, that comes with Jersey, I don't have to map it because Jersey already knows, right? You've created an exception with the status not found, so Jersey knows what the status is. So I'm gonna try accessing this URL, message ID 100, which I know doesn't exist. I'm accessing comment one from it. When I access this, I get 404 not found, and that's because we created a not found over here. But again, the problem is since we don't have a response, 
it shows the Tomcat error page. So I need to set the response here. Now I can set it by adding a response over here. Like you see here, there is a constructor which takes in a response as an argument. So I can prepare a response over here and send it to the web application exception and that is gonna be returned over here. Now let me create that response, which is very similar to what we did for data not for an exception mapper. So let me copy these two things. This here, we don't want to return this. Instead, we want to create a local variable called response. Okay, let me change this to a message. So all I've done over here in these two lines is build the response like we've already done. But what I'm going to do now is pass the response to the web application exception constructor. We'll do that here as well. Okay, now it should return that response when I make this call. And there you go, we get the response that we prepared over here. Okay, to summarize, you build a response and then you pass it to the constructor of the web application exception and that's what you throw. And uh, Jack Saris is aware of web application exception so it knows exactly what to do, okay? Now that I've explained how to do this, let me tell you why I'm not a big fan of this. You see here, this is common service. It's a business service. And in the business service, I have all this code which handles response that needs to be sent to the user. So this is not really business code, right? This is actually, I would say, presentation code because this is something that manifests as user experience. The user sees this. So this is a bad place for this code to be in, right? You don't want it to be in the common service. It's kind of okay if it's in the common resource. Let's say you, you don't have that code in the service, right? Let's say you have that in this method. You see if uh, get comment is returned null, in that case, you create this response. I would say that's slightly better, but still this is, I don't know, I don't like this. I prefer the exception mapper to be a separate class so that it's cleaner, right? You can create multiple exception mappers. If it were to be in the code, you will have your services littered with code like this, which is not good in my opinion. But anyway, if you were to choose this approach, this is how you do it. I'll wind up this tutorial by giving you one more shortcut. It's actually even simpler to do something like this if you were to use one of the custom exceptions. You see, web application exception is actually a parent class and there are a lot of classes which inherit from it which provide custom responses and statuses. If you look at the Java docs for web application exception, you see there are some subclasses. There is client error exception, redirect exception, and server error exception. So there are three classes for exceptions. So if you remember unit one, I told you client error are 400 error codes, right? 400 to 499. Redirection exceptions are a bunch of error codes which start from 300 to 399. Server errors are a bunch of error codes which are 500s, right? So if you look at each one of these, you see there are like a bunch of exceptions which have already been defined. There is a bad request exception, forbidden exception, and here you see there's a not found exception. Let's take a look at this. Now this is a runtime exception that indicates that the resource was not found which is basically what this is doing. But instead of having a response.status of not found, well, there is a cleaner way. You can throw a not found exception and pass in the response. So let me change one of these. I'm gonna leave this as web application exception, but here, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna use not found exception. The not found exception is same as web application exception, except for the fact that it already has the status of status not found, right? So you don't have to set that. I just use this one line. You don't have to do this, right? So this is a shortcut if you were to use web application exception for standard error codes like this, so that you don't have to use the response builder and pass in the status. So this is the third way of creating and handling exceptions in your Jaxaris application. So if you go back to the Java docs, you can look at some more of these. 
So if you look at the server error exception, you can see there are a couple here, internal server error exception, service and available exception. So all these address some of the common error cases and the common status codes that you would typically return when there is an exception or when there is an error, right? So I encourage you to look up these uh, Java docs if you, are, if you choose to use the web application exception route. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next tutorial.